so we've been looking at this uh, info and just making mm. a reading list for myself. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, the the reason one of the reason I've been looking at this uh, military housing because I've been looking, uh, I've been reading this uh, book, mm. which is called American Justice in Taiwan. Mm. So it's quite interesting in the sense that it was telling that all, all these architectures was designed and by American and all the blueprint was, oh. you know, all by the American. Taiwan, Taiwan side was only to build the structure. So it's already uh, from the starting point, it's already entailed this sort of um, uh, diplomatic immunity and, and give the sense of uh, you know, like uh, accessibility and inaccessibility. Mm. So quite interested in that idea because it's quite similar to how the US military bases uh, was built in Udon Thani as well. Oh. Like for, yeah, for example, the Ramosan station, the, I think the, the US military was purchasing it from the government without the consent of the local people. Mm. And, and after that, it was uh, very secret and very prohibited to the locals and everybody else except the US agent. So it's very kind of similar uh, connotation happening. And yes, yeah, we're looking at this. There's also a, this kind of, but this, I, I don't think we have uh, this exact case in, in Udon, but uh, in this book, this were, they were mentioning about the the case does give rise to the riot, which mm. is like uh, the the Mac uh, personal, the U.S. Mac personal was was sh shot one of the Taiwanese agent. Yeah, and then th this this case was another example of the uh, when when the U.S. committed crime in 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 the country where, where the base is. Mm. The US personnel doesn't have to, to be justified by, by the local court. Mm. So they were sent back to the US. Yeah, so this uh, person I was interviewing in Udon, he, he, was used, he used to be an investigator in, in the Lamasan camp. He also telling me his duty was to uh, go around in in Udon in downtown to court to to court order misbehaved GI and send them back to be <laughs> trial at home. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is the area. And so yeah, the initial idea was that um, uh, regarding the accessibility and inaccessibility of the space. I was thinking of removing first. I was thinking uh, thinking about the main the main exhibit space in the museum. So uh, I was thinking of removing part of the wall and replacing it with um, uh, a window, like a fixed window panel. Mm. So when people see when people walk, the viewer walk around this area they have this sense of seeing, but at the same time, it's kind of uh, inaccessible. Mm. So it's kind of playing ar uh, around this idea of, you know, like a kind of geographical immunity in a way. Mm. And, yeah. and on, so on one side, you have this uh, uh, staff working in daily, right? And on the mm. other side, <laughs> I want to have this recreating the some materials I I could possibly find in relation, you know, like each material that could relate to the period, uh, mm. to the uh, Mac personnel or the U.S. material within that period and recreate it in sort of different contexts. Mm. Yeah. So after it, after you send me the link uh, of the 
uh, the artist who, who, who he do like on site. Uh. So uh, I tend to look back to the actual area and thinking mm. of this, if it possibility to actually intervene with the site. So yeah, so I'm looking at these abandoned places. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's definitely possible, but it depends on the way what we want to do inside. Right. And big in Wellington Heights, a uh, situation it's private, so it means mm. that we only have to negotiate with the landlord, which is always easier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's always easier to. Um, negotiate with private sections than with government. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's totally possible. We just need to spend some money and things will be okay. But um, we need to think about because the location were not quite accessible. Yeah, it's not that close to any um, subway station. Also not many mass transportation actually visit there so maybe after maybe we have to think about how to send audiences there or you just want to uh, go there and do something as a performance and we can record it or something or you want to really exhibit over there we can talk about it so I also been making the, some list of some materials I was thinking about. So like I mentioned some uh, artillery show, which is in, because I, uh, from the, my previous work, I used this uh, aluminum from the bomb remnant from Laos. Mm. And then I, I kind of want to carry on this process. So if it possible, like this artillery show from Kinmen could be, I'm thinking of it could be transformed into sort of uh, an, an our angle bar to hold mm. the window. Yeah. So yeah, and then all, the, all this other US related materials, oh. maybe if, if I can borrow from the collectors. Mm. Yes, but it yeah. depends on what kind of collection do we find, yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah, it's just an example. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you, so the, the, teen, the teen group at that uh, restaurant you were mentioned, mm. Uh, do they actually have all this material? Yeah, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when you show me this a picture, I think it's back to like four years ago or five years ago, right? It's written that the Teen Club on Grass Mountain will reopen as a restaurant with mm -hmm. two historical showrooms. Yeah. So maybe there is historical showrooms. Yeah, mm. but I have to be there to check out because at least so far through the uh, internet bloggers information, they care only about the food because <laughs> it's a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. It would be fine, fun, fun if they can display some things related to it. Yeah. Mm. So also, I, um, this is some of the artists I, I could refer to. Excuse me. Yeah, right. Maybe this is uh, some of the artists I, I, I can refer to in terms of uh, how, how the installation would look like. So for example, for Mike Milson, Mm. He used all this uh, 
household materials and then install it in a way that uh, the viewer can actually enter the installation and, and then it may start to feel like you're sort of entwining with someone's private space yeah but at the same time on the second picture is by rod dickinson he mm. sort of uh, make you see only from the outside mm. but the inside is actually the performance was happening as well so and as well as the said the the third photo of the edward hopper which is give this sense of you're looking at some kind of material mm. culture but you don't have this accessibility oh yeah. you're looking out from the window from a window yeah so I, I i quite like this sense of feeling when when if the viewer seeing this kind of a setting but in a way there's no they, they won't be accessible from there only the mere look mm -hmm. and i quite like the setting to be light up with uh forest and lighting because I personally, I think is give this sense of fictional as well. So yeah, it's kind of playing between the fictional space within the actual setting, mm. the actual architecture. So because I'm thinking in a way when, when the US uh, military was settling or this accommodation is kind mm. of a fictional space <laughs> in, in, in that sense. Yeah. So yeah, oh. I kind of want to do, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it, yeah, maybe smaller size. Yeah. We'll see what kind of run mm -hmm. we can find, yeah. Yes, so this is sort of my initial idea surrounding what I want to do and yeah. Good. Oh, it's already quite into details. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But do you want to, um, I think, okay. Just, um, okay. I think we'll need to think about how to get people think of that particular time when uh, MAAG were still in Taipei, yeah so that people can get connected with the space, with the work that you present. Otherwise, um, if we uh, fail to deliver the party, uh, that time issue, then they won't be uh, able to fully understand the context. Yeah. And actually, other than MAAG, because MAAG were like American soldiers. There were mm -hmm. also some Japanese spy working for Chiang Kai-shek at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the place where they used to gather and had meeting were also in Beitou. So maybe there is another point of view of seeing how these two different groups, like American soldiers and Japanese spies, Japanese soldiers, the way they they both working for Chiang Kai-shek, but the way they act were totally different. Yeah, like the American soldier were always quite noisy <laughs> and showing their own existence. Like a by like a going where we are, the where they are, and they were always quite um, bring a lot of uh, American culture, pop culture to, and the consuming consumer products to wherever they are. 
compared to like Japanese spies or Japanese soldiers, they were always quite low key and they were always quite, quite hidden from the daylight. Yeah. Which I think is always also quite interesting comparison. Yeah. Both happening in Beto. Yeah. Mm. And the at the big, for example, I mean, for example, when we invited uh, Takila, uh, Ta, Taki, Takayama Akila to uh, Taiwan, um, he had totally different impression after he actually arrived in Beitou. Because right now the whole Beitou area is too touristic. Yeah, it's quite far away from the um, atmosphere of those uh, back to the war time to his imagination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I also think um, when you arrive here, you might have, you, you, you will have a, just a different impression after you arrive. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I agree that we can um, take, uh, we can pay a visit to Wellington Heights and also to the renovated uh, American Teen Club for sure. Yeah. And we can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can see. Because we, we, we need to think about if it's, uh, if we are showing this to the audiences, we need to think about how to get there. Yeah, because those places are not so um, easily accessible. I think that's the, so far, the only concern that I have. Otherwise, it sounds quite mm, interesting. Also to show the comparison of what you have in Thai, in Utiton should be interesting, yeah. And the other thing uh, about the installation I'm thinking is um, it also have to do with accessibility of the audience again. Yes. Because um, I was thinking of using this uh, type of glass, which is like a, a reflective glass. So mm. this type of glass, when when on a daytime, on a day, so basically it's work like if if you are on the on a, a darker side, you will see on the light on the brighter side. So in the daytime, people won't be able to see inside unless uh, there's a light inside the installation. Mm. But uh, at night, if if the interior of the installation was was litting so people will see so i just imagine it would be also very have this sense of the similar to the the painting of edward hoppers like you you could see this light coming out it's really but like again, going though. yeah but it's at night <laughs> mm. so mm. i see what you mean mm. Mm. Yeah. So, but is it possible to have like a a night visit of the work? Yeah. Is it practical? Yeah, it is. It's practical. I think it shouldn't be a problem because if we work, we are going to solve the problem for audience for to make it accessible. We need to think about the transportation. So we can arrange the time, yes. But it will be better to have a meaning to visit there in the night, not only mm -hmm. because of the light. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has to be convincing for audiences to visit in the night. Yeah. 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 I was I was thinking vaguely about about this kind of uh, justifying the visit. <laughs> because I was thinking of uh, the uh, Beto, you uh, have this relation to the, the night landscape, right? Of being mm. the late night district and people coming out at night to, you know, like roam around. 
So yeah, yeah, I was thinking lately about that as well. The point of Beto as a red light street, it's a red light street in daytime too, <laughs> not oh. only in nighttime. <laughs> you know, you know, because when the, the U.S. soldier when they came, it doesn't really matter. It's daytime or nighttime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I also think maybe I can um, connect you with some uh, scholar or researcher who spent more time studying the Cold War uh, time history of Taiwan. So that maybe they can uh, recommend us more uh, material to study or to research. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise it will be quite limited to Beitou because I'm here. Yeah, but I think general in Ho Taipei or in Taiwan, there should be a lot of this kind of housings or a lot of this kind of um, buildings somewhere. Yeah. No problem. Uh, yeah, about the exhibition Noble, Noble uh, curated this year in Taipei Fine Art Museum. Mm -hmm. And I found it highly uh, relevant to what mm -hmm. uh, you are uh, researching right now. Yeah, that's why I want to invite him to uh, join our pre-recording session so that um, through both of your research, I think we can find a lot of things relevant of the post-war syndrome <laughs> in Thai and Taiwan. <laughs> do you want to uh, uh, do you want to um, briefly introduce uh, what's the uh, so far the uh, situation about your research so that maybe uh, no people can uh, find some uh, can give you some feedback and we can start the discussion. Yeah, so I uh, after the presentation I did last time, I also been uh, looking at uh, the Japanese uh, white group you was telling me about, but uh, only briefly, not so much into detail, but I came up with some quite interesting information uh, regarding, because my re research topic was focusing on uh, this kind of uh, uh, the third space of uh, external territoriality and in a sense I think it's kind of uh, have that sense of being uh, a fictional space which is exit within the actual real space so and then from from the the US side, I, I already mentioned last time on, on the presentation that uh, the case the, that emphasized this idea was to do with the, the shooting that led to the liar because of uh, the US military personnel was uh, having, having this kind of uh, diplomatic immunity. So, at the same time with the Japanese white group, I found out that this uh, general, uh, the general called, uh, uh, oh, sorry, let me have a little bit. Uh, Okamura, Okamura Yasuchi, Yasuchi, he was, um, he was actually being trial for the war crime, but then uh, the Kokmintang was, you know, announcing announcing him as a not guilty because they want to uh, utilize him as the military advisor. So it's kind of having this similar sense between the US side and the Japanese side of being have this uh, extra kind of Jewish jurisdiction. So it's quite interesting to play out between this area. Yeah. And also I found there's also a, a housing <laughs> in Beto for the founder of the white group as well. So yeah, it's quite, yeah. So what I want to do is create a 
for the for the installation that I want to do is to create this kind of uh, blurring between uh, real space and fictional space within the gallery context, or maybe within the actual housing space. Yeah. Does it make sense? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because um, last time I mentioned mm -hmm. to uh, we that uh, in Beitou we have, because uh, at the first uh, discussion with him, he mm -hmm. asked me about the um, US um, how, military housing in Yangmingshan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I also told him that actually in Beitou, there's a village called Wellington Heights, Wellington mm -hmm. Shanzhong. Mm -hmm. And that was also around the uh, 60s to 70s. Mm -hmm. um, many uh, researchers or scientists working in Vietnam, mm -hmm. they have their um, family in Taiwan and they can have holiday every several months. Mm -hmm. they, instead of flying back to the US, they fly to um, Taipei to get reunion uh, with their family. Okay, I mm -hmm. see. And I also mentioned to him about Bai Tuan, the mm -hmm. white group, because um, I need to let him know that there's not only a U.S. military advisor in Taiwan. Actually, there are also some spies. I think they are spies mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> from Japanese side in Taiwan. So the situation is actually more complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think because uh, Guomindang region is also uh, kind of extremely right wing. Uh, dictatorship in Taiwan. So so somehow uh, the, the party and the party basic uh, government itself is already extra jurisdiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but when we talk about the um, extraterritorial right, I also um, I also mentioned uh, it's it's also a quite important issue in South Korea. Yeah. Because uh, the the downtown of the of, of Seoul, they also have a uh, kind of uh, uh, U.S. military uh, based areas, especially around the Itaewon's uh, uh, areas, which now is quite a uh, kind of a uh, young fashion uh, uh, areas. But before is kind of a uh, uh, area that's an uh, also uh, neighbors of the uh, US military base. So, so they have been to uh, happen a lot of uh, rapid or murdered uh, uh, cases, but uh, every time the uh, US uh, uh, military uh, servants, they, they could be uh, out of the uh, normal uh, local jurisdictions uh, procedures. Yeah. And the, I, I remember the last case uh, happened even at, until the middle of the uh, 1990s. Sorry, is that something wrong with my... Uh... Yeah. But, but because the situation was uh, in Taiwan, the, the United States um, stopped the formal relationship with Taiwan until uh, 1979. So you can also say it, uh, after the 1979, uh, uh, this kind of a situation is not, uh, I think it's, it's kind of a situation that's only to remind until 1970s. But, but when we talk about uh, the uh, U US military uh, habitant, like in Yangmingshan. I think one of the most interesting things is that uh, during the late uh, 1970s, uh, the government, they also tried to build the science park. How not a idea. Uh, 
Sorry, sorry. Okay, so so everything okay now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just mentioned about the Xinzhu Science Park. Science and park. Uh, yeah, Science Park. Is it in another city? Yeah, it, it's also it's the northern part of Taiwan. And the Science Park is kind of the uh, 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 production industry uh, area, but but they try to make in kind of the uh, uh, computer to, and, and until now it, it's more like ta Taiwanese Silicon Valley and still quite uh, strategical and uh, important. But what I want to mention is about uh, the, the urban designs of the science park is quite similar to uh, the uh, uh, United United States uh, military uh, basement area. Yeah, I mean, especially for the habitants union, un units. Be because, uh, because during the uh, 1960s and 1970s, most of the uh, Taiwanese athletes, if they have chance to go abroad to study at the uh, United States or, or European countries, they usually don't come back. So they will try to stay there and be also became uh, <coughs> Americans. So mm -hmm. at the end of the 1970s and 1980s, the government want to attract these uh, Taiwanese immigrants to come back mm -hmm. for service for their countries. But mm -hmm. the problem is that uh, the living condition and environment is totally different compared to the United States, which they already been uh, uh, quite adapted, yeah. So, so they they try to also, uh, I mean the 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 government the government they also built kind of a American style big house, like single house with garden and also the well maintained securities to to attract uh this union to come back to Taiwan, and for the uh. Science Park, they also have kind of a perfume for the outsider, which means uh, like uh, like after 9 p.m., the, the uh, normal citizen, they, they can't just walk into the uh, Science Park area. Yeah. So, 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 so this is kind of, uh, I think this is kind of a uh, uh, con continue to uh, to uh, to practice uh, the, the similar models which the United States uh, habitants area already already it's uh, down to Yum Sounds village yeah so so I think this part is quite interesting yeah. thank you but but maybe it's not really related <laughs> to the uh, extraterritoriality. But it's a pity that just like what I mentioned last time, the uh, when MAAG were uh, in Taiwan, actually there were they located in the area very close to Taipei, where Taipei Fine Art Museum were built right now, because um, MAAG were um, activated in Taiwan until late nineties, and actually the Fine Art Museum of Taipei starts in late 80s, which means that they kind of take over the, the image of that area and trying to give it a new meaning. Yeah, so in my perspective or in my opinion, I think that is also quite interesting of mm. Mm, yeah, reusing yeah. the area or trying to, I would feel like it's kind of whitewash Mm. Yeah, because when U.S. Um, military were was there, there were a lot of pubs, a lot of um, bar pubs. I think and the, the, the first hamburger shop in Taiwan was oh, also just near the, the yeah, the, also near the uh, Taipei Fine Art Museum. The, the first hamburger and shop. first church mm. having English mass mm. Mm, were also. Um, uh, in at that area. Yeah, yeah, but, but now it's kind of a Filipinos uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, area. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So for me, like uh, um, 
re, uh, redesign that area into a fine art museum park or soccer stadium. There mm -hmm. used to be soccer stadium too. Is sort of like a whitewash of that area mm -hmm. too. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's also because the United States uh, stopped the formal relationship with Taiwan. Oh. So, so, so the military must be retreated from mm. Taiwan. Mm. And uh, now they still have some, just few persons, uh, maybe working in the, we, we, we are not called uh, embassy here, but called AIT, America, Americans in Taiwan. But in fact, it's the facto embassy, but we can't call it embassy. And they also maybe send some uh, Marine Corps in the AIT, but they must to pretend they are just the uh, uh, civilians. They are not work for the United States government here. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so it's kind of a very strange uh, situations here. I think for this part might be a bit unfamiliar for people from Thai because, mm. yeah. <laughs> and I think for, for another big issue is because during the Cold War, uh, the Kuomintang also might sound uh, 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 un unofficial uh, recognize it, uh, uh, military persons as the normal tyrants, yeah. And, and they also got the support from the CIA. Yeah. Is it proven? Hmm? Is it? Uh, I think it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, this information is come from an uh, artist called Xu Jiao. Yeah, yeah. And he has, about been, yeah, yeah, he has yeah. been directly talked with the retired person who still mm. stayed there. Yeah. yeah, I think it's quite. Interesting because in in the north of Thailand, there's also a, a group called uh, yeah, an unknown warrior association, mm -hmm. which yeah. has the, which has their base in in Wudon. But they mm -hmm. they did this operation between uh, for for the for the CIA, and then their main operation was to to being like the forward air guide for the US. Air bomb to bomb the to bomb Laos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting, and and there also a, a monk monk soldier, right? Which yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think uh, Zoe has been mentioning that you you are uh, come from the uh, Isan yeah. regions. Yeah. Okay. I have I has been to uh I have been to a Kolat. Yeah. Kolat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but 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 never been to Hong Kong. Okay. Right. My my hometown is the uh, north of Hong Kong. Okay. About one and a half hour drive. Yeah. Mm. So so it's more near Laos. Right? Yes, yes. About uh fifth. 50 kilometers from, from the border. Okay, it's pretty new. Yeah. We, do you have, um, cause I see in your last presentation, you mentioned that uh, you want to do some installation to juxtapose, to put together the history of uh, Thai, of, of the post-war history of Thai and Taiwan. And, um, that's why I mentioned that actually there are a lot of uh, details which is quite different, even though um, during that time that American uh, US Army played quite important role in the in ASEAN area. Yeah, and I want to know if um, after this research, do you have in mind any um, change or any further uh, development on that? Yeah, uh, for for the material that could reflect the the involvement of the U.S. military in 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 Thai or Southeast Asia part, I quite 
have been quite ambiguous about those kind of materials. As you say, it's, it's, though it's similar, but then it's kind of a total different kind of narratives. But now it's quite interesting in more on, also on, um, uh, you know, like uh, some material that could reflect not only uh, the involvement of the U.S. military in in Taipei, but also the Japanese military, and uh, quite interested in the the sulfur mining. So, if if I could get a hand to that mineral and maybe planes turn it into something, like I have shown in my previous presentation, I I used to. Uh, play around with some mineral from Laos, which 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 is the, the mineral is from the area where it used to be uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail, and then mm -hmm. I kind of turned that material into a ceramic glazing. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I could do something with this, the same same type of material or maybe other type of material, but I I tend to want to manipulate it a little bit so it have this kind of evolve into a different sort of uh, something else not really what what is formally looking like yeah and i want to maybe like i mentioned before i want to carve out <laughs> the window uh carve mm -hmm. out some of the space if if the work have to be inside uh, the gallery space so I want to carve out some part of the wall so people who visit the installation can actually see through the other side, which is you know, like a museum office or something like you. So that you can see this museum staff is working <laughs> in the routine. So you have this kind of different space. And then on the other side also, Maybe it could imply this sense of you know, extra space and you know, like, yeah. <laughs> but I, if it's possible, I don't know. And uh, uh, Noble, because mm -hmm. I know um, for the exhibition you mm -hmm. created this year, you actually did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. mm, about the uh, post-war syndrome in uh, Taiwan and uh, some other countries. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if there are some um, uh, hints, I would say some hints that you think we can also find through the um, perspective of Taiwan's modern mm -hmm. art and contemporary art. Mm -hmm. mm. So maybe we can also recommend some artists for uh, to for ways to no, mm, uh, I think Shi Zhao is quite essential. Mm, and mm. I think Panacha is already. Yeah, yeah. It, because it's directly related to the situation in Thai. Yes. Yeah. And, and um, a lot of uh, Vietnamese artists, they also talk about, I think that they have more discussions uh, in the area of uh, Southeast Asia uh, for folks on the uh, Cold War. Yeah, because the Cold War, the, the Vietnam's modern society is made by the Cold, Cold War. So, mm -hmm. so I think that one of the reasons they are more uh, interesting than other countries to discuss on this topic. And also for the Cambodian artists like, uh, like uh, I, I forgot his name, a photographer, uh, but he, he showed a lot of uh, you, um, American bumping ponds. And this pond becomes kind of a, because this pond usually found in the uh, rice field, but but after a few decades, it's become kind of a, uh, just a water tank, which, mm -hmm. but, but still have the shape of the, uh, the shape of the bumping. I know who you are talking about, let me check. Uh, I think he did the solo show in Li Fang, right? Yeah, I think Vantana? Huh? Van Vantana? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Vantana. Vantana. Uh, cute. 
could you spell his name on the chat? Yes, I will send you Vandi Ratana. Vandi, B A N D I, Vandi Ratana. B A N D Y, sorry. Why? I'll just um, copy paste his name for you. Ah. Maybe you saw his work somewhere mm. else already. So I think Pana Chai's uh, installation will be located uh, well, the second uh, venue. Oh, we are aiming to do the show both in uh, Jim Thompson okay. and in Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Next year. Oh, for, for next year. For next year. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so in Hong Kong, it will be the mix of all artists, like group yes. show. Okay. Yeah, like a group show. Hmm. So, can I carve out the wall of both space? <laughs> We can make a new wall for you. <laughs> no, I think Jane Thompson already kind of a mystery legacy of Cold War. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, the 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 Jane Thompson himself. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. yeah. <laughs> so if you want any information regarding that, yeah, just ask for me. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, quite interesting, but I have I haven't dig up the the story yet, but I'm not sure if it's relevant because I think there's a free time movement, uh, and the OSS is already support the free time movement, right? And then one mm -hmm. one of the member of the free time movement, he traveled to Chungking to to meet with Jiang Kai Shek to have the support of you know, to support the movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I, I didn't know about the free tight movements and the relationship with Chiang Kai-shek. But I know, uh, I just know, uh, um, the Chiang Kai-shek somehow during the Cold War, the, the early stage of the Cold War, he is more uh, supported uh, the, the Thai monarchy. Yeah. Yeah. So so he he is he is stands on the side of the monarchy, I think. So so he didn't have a good relationship with uh, Myanmar and Laos and Cambodia. So his friend in Southeast Asia is like the South Vietnam. Philippines, the Marcos in Philippines is just like his brotherhood, and also uh, and also uh, Singapore. We start to train in uh, secretary, but it's kind of an open secret that uh, we train in for the uh, Singaporean National Army since 1970 until now. So they have uh, they still have some troops in Taiwan. So we also train uh, the pilot, the pilot. Pilot. Pilot, yeah, mm. the pilots. And um, and for the Indonesians, uh, when the Sokanos uh, take his regime, Chiang Kai-shek really didn't like Sokano. Mm. So when 1959, I think the Indonesian civil war happened, Chiang Kai Shet even uh, supported Sokano's offside. So he even sent some uh, transportation airplanes to, to uh, transport a lot of uh, military uh, weapons to a uh, Sulawesi seat for the offside party, which is the right wing side. Yeah. So, so basically, it's, uh, Chiang Kai Shet. Uh, do his best to uh, against the uh, all kind of uh, left wing movement, mm -hmm. Ide ideologically and physically. Mm -hmm. So that last time when you asked me about this, I feel quite confused, and I asked Noble right away. 
Yeah, because I think that is also quite different from what we were taught, like in the textbook. Yeah. So, so I I think somehow uh, the government in Bengal also have maybe have some agreements with Shanghai Shui or Taipei government. So, so that's the reason why Kuomintang's army can still, you know, remain in the northern of Thailand. Yeah, but but we don't have any proof about that. It's just it's just a uh, uh, just a uh, historical truth that. Some Kuomintang troops still remain in the northern of Thailand for half of the century. Yeah. Can you talk about the the travel that you did to Liao last time you told me? Uh, in in terms of. Uh, the in terms of the research for the um, for the exhibition you curated in the uh, um, US space right. yeah uh, I uh, yeah I just actually I just follow up the trail because uh, all the a lot of secret operation uh, for the US during that time also have the headquarter in on. Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. the Unknown Warrior Association and also uh, the Air America, which is so their mission is not only in Vietnam but also most mm -hmm. part of Laos. And then I so I, I I also go to sort of not northern part of Laos, where where you know the Chiang Huang province where it's mm -hmm. been heavily bombarded. And mm -hmm. and then I, I found this very interesting materials, which is the aluminum from from the bomb that you has been dropping, and then uh, this material has actually been been revitalized by the locals to make a spoon and souvenir. So okay, I see. Yeah. So I I also uh, use this material in my. Uh, in progress work to turn mm -hmm. it into a uh, different type of uh, form. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And yeah, and I also travel to Sepon to have a, a peek at this Ho Chi Minh Trail and then, yeah, and the old mining shaft, which is, is also related to because this area was also related to Udon Thani in the sense of uh, Udon Thani have this Manchian archaeology, uh, archaeology mm -hmm. yeah, right? And then uh, there's a recent recent research by uh, uh, Joyce White, Dr. Joyce White, and mentioned that the relation of the bronze as found in Manchian were actually uh, more related to Sepon. So in a sense, it's quite, have this uh, layer of uh, prehistoric and also the, the you know, Cold War periods sort of on top of each other. And then because also in, in Udon, Ban Ban Chiang pottery and Ban Chiang artifacts were, were actually uh, illegal excavated it, and then flew out of the country to the U.S. Uh, air base in Udon. So the, during my trip to Laos, I tend to look for this uh, materials and this kind of uh, war uh, military history as, as well as uh, uh, prehistoric kind of site. Yeah. Uh, I think it's quite interesting. You you want to also combine the prehistorical layer. Uh, it yeah. could be make the narratives more short, uh, more complex exciting. Yeah, it's quite kind of an interesting narrative. And when you talk about uh, the, the the local people of the northern Laos, they they collect the pieces of the bomb. I think in Kimmen Island. Yeah. Yes. So so yeah. you you already know. 
Yeah, they, they also correct the bomb, but the bomb is from the train. Yeah. Yeah. And they made them made them into nine uh, and some ninth daily and utilities. Some, yeah. Maybe ninth and also scissors. Scissors. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. last time uh, we were asking about mm -hmm. um, if there are some this kind of um, war museum mm -hmm. in Taiwan that uh, we can visit if uh, um, if he uh, comes to Taiwan next year, okay. and I don't really. Uh, it uh, it didn't ring the bell to me, so I was trying to ask if you think there are some places that we can visit related to um, if we want to find this kind of war uh, items. You mean in Taiwan? Mm. I think I, I can introduce you to a former uh, intelligence officer, retired oh. from retired from <laughs> Northern Thailand. Yeah. Wow. If he wish, because he, he is also trying to build a museum, kind of a memorial ah. museum for for his colleague. Yeah, so 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 <laughs> I think maybe he will have interesting to talk. Yeah. Yeah, because I think there's no official one of this yeah. kind of wartime museum in Taiwan. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh and because he 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 stay in uh Taoyuan, which is a sub area of uh Taipei, so, mm -hmm. sub sub urban area of Taipei, and uh and uh, the neighborhoods he stay is is quite interesting because a lot of uh, Kuomintang uh, soldiers, uh, uh, I think when the Kuomintang soldier come to Taiwan, the government government also builds kind of a specific village for them. And, and it's kind of a, a policy to make sure the, uh, the Kuomintang soldier will not have too much uh, interaction or integrated with local community. Yeah, but, but one of this kind of a military village uh, is more interesting because most of the soldier and their dependents are come from uh, Myanmar and uh, Northern Thailand. Oh. So, so they, they even have a, have a mask because, uh, because uh, some of them uh, are uh, Muslim backgrounds. Yeah. So, so they come from Yunnan, the, the most uh, Southern waste part of China and and a uh, retreat to Myanmar and uh, Northern Thai Thailand and then, and then could, resettled could, to Taipei. Right. Could, yeah. could you spell the, the area name, please? Uh, Long Tang. Long Tang. <laughs> Long Dong Chun. Long Dong. Um, Long Dong Chun Chun. Long Dong Zhong Zheng. Yang Chun. Oh. I know that place, yeah. but they are famous because of very different cuisine, very different Yeah, food. yeah, because they are more folks on kind of a, a Yunnan Myanmar style. Yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, in Taipei, a lot of uh, Thai cuisine restaurants, in fact, are opened by, by the uh, uh, Chinese Chinese Myanmar backgrounds, oh. immigrants, and they return the the the, the Burmese in the return some Burmese it's the the cyber, but but uh but on Chinese they they call themselves the Thai restaurant, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so so it's kind of a quite a complex. Long Tan, Dong Zheng Ma. Oh, mi gan. Mm. Yeah, because they eat very special food. Long gang. Spells the area name. Um, I don't find English. No. <laughs> Yeah, but but it's the same situation in Thailand. <laughs> really? Yeah, a lot of uh, secret. Oh. 
information so only remains its local writing. But I'll try to find some English introduction for mm. you later. Mm. It's a good point to mention this. Yeah, and, and mm. also the, the Barman Street is Yonghe, in Dianjie. Oh. Yeah, because they, they, they are kind of uh, uh, the immigrant backgrounds, but directly connected to a booming down tree as the Myanmar in modern time. This one, this one, Zhonghe Mianlu. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think it's uh, quite good of point of view to loy ah yeah this one dong zhen xing to loyalty new village yes loyalty new village mm. loyalty new village yeah it, it they, they call it new village because it's usually you can translate it in English. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Ah. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it's uh, perfectly automatic translated but we can check later mm. but oh, yeah. at least i think it's a very interesting trail mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. i think if you have chance to visit here next year mm, just hopefully we can go to some uh cuisine shop <laughs> <laughs> for check yeah so you can tell us if that's authentic or not yeah, but, but it, it's kind of a uh, it, it's also kind of a very heavy uh, military culture in the mm. village. Yeah, because almost everyone's related to the to uh, military. Yes. Yeah. I think because we were in previous discussion talking about the uh, um, um, US Army housing and talking about white group, but actually there are a main group of this um, military, a lot of people with, with, um, retreated with Chiang Kai-shek from China to Taiwan. They also built a lot of military village and the mm -hmm. uh, housing style is totally different. There's uh, totally two millions of uh, population retreated with Chiang kai -shek. Yes. 1949. Yeah. yeah, that's quite a big turning point of Taiwan as well. Yeah, and that kind of uh, village, they also contain a uh, kind of a uh, 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 military style uh, organization and, and, and the uh, management. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for example, they have kind of a uh, community supermarket. Oh. Before and only, only the dependent and the military person they can enter. Yeah, so mm. so it's kind of a quite isolated community. Mm. But but because uh the local people they just say okay they come from mainland China or come from other province, so the the local people they they usually think uh these villages are quite similar to each other, but. According to my uh, more deep research, I find out uh, because uh, they, they might come from the totally different cultural background. 
So so that's also a reason uh, why uh, some village they even have uh, Muslim backgrounds mm. and, <coughs> and and also have some maybe Southeast Asian uh, cultural influence. Mm. Yeah, that's a very interesting point that we yeah. I totally forgot to mention. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, we collect a lot more things to research again. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that will be a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. yeah. Because I think um, in the situation in Thai, like after uh, World War II, with the MAAG and all the um, arrival of GIs, it's uh, it also brings a big um, culture shock and change the whole uh, geography of that those um, areas. Uh, close to the uh, U.S. base, yeah. But um, before that, in Taiwan's case, after the um, colonial times of Japan, um, there were a particular time when like, we become China again. But uh, um, when Chiang Kai-shek retreated to uh, Taiwan in '49 he brought a big group of uh, military in to Taiwan and changed the um, culture and also um, uh, changed the culture. And there were also a lot of, sh um, I would say impact to the uh, culture, to the society by that time. And I think that is quite uh, different from the um, history to some other countries in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It feels like you've been like colonized again, like, but this time from uh, mainlanders. Yeah. 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 So, um, because uh, for the installation that you want to develop, uh, develop, uh, you mentioned a lot of um, forms that uh, no matter um, the object from the war time or the housing forms of different um, architecture style, but still I think there are some details that we need to check when you uh, really arrive here so that we can uh, come up with um, everything you have and decided the finalized uh, shape of what you want, how you want to install it. Yeah. Yeah, because at the moment I quite uh, ambiguous and don't have a definite conclusion yet about what to put mm. inside. Yeah, the structures, yeah. I kind, of find it, yeah. I kind of find it interesting that now through all this discussion, we have more and more layers right now. Yeah, and yeah. I think you can reflect this into the uh, installation too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to um, check or want to confirm um, during this meeting? Actually, there's a... Uh, okay.
I just wonder because I found out this uh, this Facebook group and were, they were posting similar to uh, the last the last time I sent you about this object and then literally I found this post which mentioned in the during the 50 and 60 and they have this uh, contact from there, there was a photo inside uh, one of the housing and then there is this business card of a uh, local furniture maker and pottery and yeah so i wonder if this shop is still print today so i will send you this photo Okay. There are several <laughs> shops. But, but which one you want to check? The China Pottery Arts? Yeah, China Pottery and uh, some decoration. Uh, yeah, yeah. The furniture. Furniture, the yeah. Young satisfaction. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I think we, we I think Hong Kong can maybe check it still exists or not. Yes. <laughs> yeah, can, yes, because we uh, in Beitong area we used to have uh, porcelain um pottery industry because we have clay in this area. Yeah. But that was back to the eighties because um wow. during that time because we have the the soil the clay here in Beitou and mm -hmm. it's overdeveloped and the uh, environment <laughs> uh, there there were a lot of a uh, landslide after typhoon and the mayor at that time uh, decided to um, uh, not uh, digging out any more clay from Beitou area. So the whole industry moved to Inge from Beitou. So now we don't have um, pottery uh, company here, right, in Beitou, mm. but we used to have it. Yeah, okay. it's true. Mm. So they also have a decoration company and tailor. Tailor. For suits. Ah, for the suits. Yeah, yeah but you mm. know, they have a lot of this uh, tailor in mm. uh, Qingguang area as oh, well. Oh, in Qingguang, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Qingguang still reminds some. Yeah, there are some tailor shops some remain really in old really old tailors for um, soldiers. Mm. Yeah, still remain in Taipei. Yeah, in fact, my parents are uh, from uh, Qingguang in some mm. northern world area. Yeah. So so they they work in the tailor industry, no? No, no, no. They they work for a uh, Pao Dan Bang. It's ah. kind of a, uh, uh, but but it's kind of a joint seventy and eighty, because Taiwan is still quite isolated and the normal people can't uh, uh have kind of a travel restrictions for most of the people, so they are kind of a busy business. They just take some cash to Japan or Singapore to buy some uh, 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 trendy fashion clothes. Yeah, yeah, fashion or even from, from medicine to cook it to, oh. to, uh, to the clothes. We call and, them and, imported and, yeah, products. Imported not by the company scale, but just by individual. Mm. Yeah. And they, they will usually open kind of a shop for for sale in this kind of a goods. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But but this kind of a business because the uh, uh, open for the free trade and globalization now, so it's already gone. Yeah, already yeah. finished. 
this kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. It's a little bit like Amazon before Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. And because sometimes the custom can can ask uh the shop what what kind of uh, goods he wants or she wants, and mm. and the person who can who can try to bring it back. Uh, by the next travel, yeah, so they usually like go to Tokyo every one month or two months mm -hmm. and try to bring <clears throat> kind of a uh, uh, foreign goods that you can easily to buy it locally. Yeah, their customer yeah. might ask them to visit like a Takashimaya or yeah. Isetan department store for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes the price could be like twice or triple expensive mm -hmm. than than the. Uh, actual price. Mm. Funny, there's still a lot of things, a lot of mm, trace remained, yeah, mm -hmm. to find this. But the photo you send us are basically a lot of business cars, a lot of name cars, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So when, when you were mentioning about the pottery business, so is it uh, when the, is it start in the eighties or is it start before before that and then end in the eighties? End in the eighties. Right. It's like because um hundred years ago when Japanese uh, start to develop Beto area, they come mainly for hot spring and for surfer. Yeah, but when Nobel <laughs> invented bomb, that you don't really need suffer to make bomb anymore. So um, no one, um, uh, so the uh, software uh, industry finished by that time, but now Hasbring is more for entertainment and for more for leisure use. So it also changed the um, landscape in Beto, I think. Mm. And draw, draw in the seventies, mm. the Beto area, the street Hasbring area is still is. It's also kind of providing uh, sexual industry. Yeah, the for, red for light industry. United yeah. States military. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially during, I think the, the high peak is during Vietnamese war. Yes. So, yeah. Because a lot of uh, military, military person will just come like for stay half month for rest and go back to Vienna for fight. Yeah, for the R and R project, the rest and recovery project that yeah we mentioned about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. So I guess we have uh, accumulate enough information for research at this stage. And also we can start to prepare the itinerary. When you visit Taipei, you have so many places to visit <laughs> and finalize the, uh, uh, the final insta uh, installation. Yeah. And uh, now we've put both of you in connect. So for the uh, military village and also for the the person that you mentioned that we might uh, be able to interview, we can continue uh, discussions through emails, I think. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay. So thank you for your time, Nobu. Okay. Mm. Thank, thank you so much. much. Okay. 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 See you.